unless one have been living underground, weather plays a part in everybody's daily lives. It illustrations weather not only a part of the setting but can also enhance the mood and overall image. We'll talk about the elements of weather as well as how to draw each and every one of them. If there's any brush from a sets I use, I'll also include the link. In general, we can divide normal weather into four types, sunny, cloudy, rainy, and snowy, followed by severe weather like storm and blizzard. I prefer to group the weather based on the mood, bright, murky, and dark. Bright weather means clear sky. If there's cloud, it's usually in tune with the sky's color instead of murky. Brilliant might be a fitting word for this weather. During the day, the sky is bright blue, and during the night, the sky is clear enough to see the moon and stars. Murky weather pretty much means low in saturation. Dark weather means low in both brightness and environment visibility. There are colors that commonly used for sky in different time of day. Bright shades of blue for day, red and orange for dawn and dusk, and dark blue and black for night. Almost any color goes, except for green. Depending on the weather, white and gray are possible because of the cloud. When the sky is bright blue, the colors of the objects can stay as they are, no need to alter it. When the color of the sky changes from blue into another color, the objects will share the colors of the sky. For example, during the dusky red sky, the clouds would look redder. Clouds come in varying shapes, spread, and density. More than just a weather element, cloud can be arranged to highlight or divert viewers' attention. Here, there are three elements, sky, cloud, and silhouette. The focus of the picture on the left isn't clear. The main focus of the middle one is the silhouette. The main focus of the right one is the clouds. There are excellent cloud brushes in Clip Studio sets. I recommend this brush set. Using the brushes, it's possible to paint clouds using just one color by adjusting the pen pressure as we draw to control the opacity. For multiple colored clouds, paint the clouds using the brightest color available in the sky. Create a new layer and clip. Change the blending mode to the color dodge. Paint the brightest part of the cloud. Create another layer and clip, change the blending mode to color burn, using the darkest color of the sky, paint the shadowed part. Whirling clouds or tornado can also be drawn using the cloud brushes. Prepare the background and draw the tornado guideline on separate layer. Paint the tornado part in white. The layers created after this will all be clipped to this layer. Create a new layer. Paint it with color a bit darker than the sky. Create a new layer, paint it with a color darker than the previous one. Another new layer, another darker color. Create a new layer. Using nearby colors gives spinning effect to the tornado. Optional, use a darker color to make the shape of the tornado clearer. When is invincible so we can only show its existence through other elements or items present in the illustration. In some cases, when is depicted using lines. When strength can vary, it's something to be decided before you start drawing. Like when, heat is invincible, it's usually depicted with melting ice and sweat. Swallowing heat can be visualized with heat distortion. You can create weather-related heat distortion using filter, distort, Zigzag. Angle is self-explanatory. Wave height determines how distorted the picture would be while the higher the number of waves, the more curves you get. Rain often only visible when there's a light source and contrasting background. This holds true in both day and night. Color the rain in the brightest light available in the illustration, sometimes lowering the opacity the further it is from the light source. Draw the rain in a flash by using figure tool, stream, rain. I don't bother changing the settings at first and just use it on the illustration. Use object tool and change the setting according to your need while being able to see the result of the change live. Main color is the color of the rain. Angle is self-explanatory. Adjusting the red line also changes the angle. Gap of line means how far it's rain from each other. The smaller the gap, the more tightly packed it is. Length determines how long the raindrop is. 
Shorter raindrop is good for drizzle while longer works well for heavier rain. Gap from reference determines how far the raindrop straights on the shape we made. Brush size determines the thickness of each raindrop. Brush shape can be changed to fit the brush style we use for the illustration. Personally, I prefer airbrush. The main problem is it's hard to draw heavy rain in one go. Copying the rain layer and adjust the settings is one solution. The other solution is to draw the rain manually. The droplets can be drawn using spray airbrush. It works great for evenly sized droplets. I prefer to use my own snow brush for size variants. Use filter, blur, motion blur. In black and white illustration, draw the raindrops in white against dark backgrounds and in black against light backgrounds. Not only by drawing the falling raindrops, drawing rainwater dripping from objects can also tell the viewer how heavy the rain is. Water droplets bounce back after the rain hit the surface, ripples and running droplets on the glass window can also inform the rain intensity. Aside from drawing the rain in straight lines, drawing the raindrops in round droplets can give the illustration time has top feel. Mixing both types is also a good idea. Rainbow can appear after a sun shower. Fun fact about rainbows, you can only see a rainbow if the sun is behind you. Snow comprised of a bunch of snowflakes, making it look powdery at the edges. Prepare the object. Paint the powdery snow with running color spray airbrush. If you prefer a lumpy snow, skip this step. Paint the solid snow with soft watercolor brush. Create another layer, still using soft watercolor brush, paint the shadow. To make the shadow's edges crisper, I use hard eraser. For snowfall, I made my own brush. Prepare the background. I made it blurry because the snow is the main focus. Draw the front most snow. Copy the snow layer and use Gaussian blur to give the snow glowing effect. Merge the snow layers into one. Draw smaller snow on a new layer. Draw the smallest snow on another new layer. Use Gaussian blur without copying the layer first. The smallest snow is meant to be a part of the background. Blizzard can be drawn easily with the help of motion blur. The steps are similar to manual rain from the previous section. Prepare the snow, preferably quite a lot for more dramatic effect. Filter, blur, motion blur. Compared to heavy rain, the strength is reduced to give volume to the snow. Like the rain, black and white snowfall is simple. On background other than white, draw the snow in white. On white background, give the snow black outline. You can use layer property, border effect for automatic outline. Individual snowflakes are usually tiny and not visible to naked eye, but it has beautiful hexagonal shapes you might want to draw for aesthetic reasons. Eyes usually drawn clear and transparent. To give an icy look, it's usually colored in white or shades of blue. Draw the outline. Draw the details. If you're used to draw the breed, the ice details were drawn in a similar way. Create a new layer beneath the outline. Select a part and then use soft airbrush to paint each part in blue. Don't completely fill it up. Create a new layer above it and clip. Add white highlight near the detail lines. For colored background, taking colors from the background, paint the eyes with soft airbrush. Draw the main part. Draw the branches on a separate layer. For the shiny pack, copy the main thunder layer. Use Gaussian Blur. In thunder's color, paint a circle at the tip of the thunder using soft airbrush. Using the same color and cloud brushes, highlight the clouds where the thunder bull originates and the cloud that happen to be close to it. Consist of tiny water droplets and limit visibility, both often used to give an eerie or mysterious feel. For this sample, I separated the trees into four layers. This is to show the mist or fog intensity by lowering the visibility of the layers in different levels. Create a mist layer right above each tree layer. Paint the mist in white with cloud brushes from the sky and cloud section. It gives the mist nice cloudy texture. 
fog is thicker than mist and have less cloudy texture so I used soft airbrush. Since fog limits visibility way more than mist, the two three layers at the back are not that visible. To blend the character into the weather, pick the theme color in the picture, then change the blending mode. That's it about weather. I hope you find this video useful. I make various art tutorial videos and post a new one at least once a month. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.